In this video, I'll review some of the main features that I've included in my config of NeoVim for writing LaTeX documents. So let's open up NeoVim. And you can see that we have this nice start screen. I can search through recent files and it has a nice fuzzy finder. So even if I don't get everything right, if I misspell what I'm looking for, it will still guess what I might want to open. But I'm going to open up sessions. This is the main way that I interact with the different projects that I have live. And so each session will load a host of different files relevant to a project. So you can see I have these different buffers up here. I can click through them, but I can also tab through them with backspace or go in the opposite direction with shift tab. You can create a new session or switch to another session with manage sessions down here. And so I can either delete some of sessions that I have if they're no longer relevant, or I can switch to a new session if I care to do so with load, or if I have all my buffers opened up in the way that I like, I can save a session. Sessions will also save upon exit. so. Let's say I exit with my cursor here on with space and then Q for quit. And then let's reopen that session and it will leave my cursor just where I was. And so that's very convenient for returning to the exact point that I started. Okay, so that's a little bit about sessions and buffers, but let's now switch to look at some of the main features which Vimtech provides, which is the primary plugin that I'm using for interacting with LaTeX documents. So this is a LaTeX document and let's build it. So we have space B for build. Okay. And it's nice and fast and it will highlight the closest sentence that are to our cursor. So let's say we scroll down a little bit and I'd like to edit some of these definitions. So if I click control and click, it will then bring me to that part of the document. And vice versa, if I scroll down inside my LaTeX document, and I want to view this sentence, say, I can then do space and then V for view, and it will highlight the relevant sentence inside the PDF. So this is the basics for the synchronization between the PDF and the LaTeX document, making it easy to go between it's also convenient to be able to use the index feature provided by Vimtech. So if I click I for index, you can see I have a bunch of to-dos here. And so let's go to one of those. So all that is required to make a to-do is just to write the words to-do in all caps um, or lowercase, but as one word. And it will highlight it and it will include it inside the index. So in addition to my to-dos, there's also sections for the preamble and then each section of the paper. So let's view this one. Likewise, inside Zathura, there is an index feature. So if I hit spacebar, then you can see that I can float between different sections easily. And then with another control click, I can go to that point in the document. Okay, so that's a little bit about index. Another nice feature is word count. So if I do space <coughs> C for count, it will tell me how many words I have in my document. And if I want to get rid of this little buffer here, I do space and then D for delete buffer. Okay, so that's word count. Um, Another nice feature is to view the error log. So for this, we'll go into the actions menu, A, and then go to R for report errors. And you can see I don't have too many errors. And I'm also gonna get rid of this little buffer with space D. If you close one of your main buffers um, up top, so let's say we go over to do and we close it, I can reopen it with control P and this allows me to fuzzy find through all the files in my 
main directory for this project. So let's go to to do, and now it's reopened. Okay, so that's error log. The last feature coming from Vint Vimtech that I'll mention now is if we go back into the actions menu, sometimes it's convenient to clean the aux file. So we'll do C. And so you can say compiler clean finish. So what it does is it deletes all the aux files. And then since we have already run build, so the build mode is on, it will regenerate the document uh, with fresh aux files. Okay, let's now switch to looking at some of the features for managing citations. So if you want to add a citation, Vimtech is set up to draw on the bibliography that you've included down in the bottom. So if we start writing, you can see that it will bring up all of Stallnacker's different papers. Um, the best way to sort of manage through these is to have the author and the date in mind, but it does show you what um, the, each paper is called. So that's convenient. Um, so let's go down to one of these, that one. Okay, great. So another way to go th through your citations is you can use the find menu. So F for find, and then we'll do C for citations. And this is my entire Zotero database. And so we can do the same thing. And let's say I don't know the year, but I know <clears throat> it had content in the title and then I can select it. Great. So that's two different ways to add citations. And let's, uh, in order to include these in the document, you can notice this little circle here. So we've not yet saved this document. So let's save it and we'll do that with space and then W for write. And so once it's been saved, it will regenerate the PDF, look up those citations and fill them in. And you can see 20 here, we have uh, <clears throat> content and modality. Okay, let's go back to the older position with control O. And we can now um, demonstrate another nice feature, which is uh, annotation. So with the, say I have a new paper here, and let's say I'm reading it and I want to highlight some part of it, perhaps to quote later. Let's say I'll just take this whole block. Okay, and let's save this. Okay, so I've now saved this uh, PDF and this is by Ditter. And so let's go and cite that. Okay, there's the paper. And let's say that while citing it, I also want to draw up some of the different blocks of text I've highlighted, or perhaps some of the notes that I've included in that paper. So another feature provided by Vimtech, and we'll get this through the actions menu, is you have Vimtech menu. So let's do that. And so it allows you a few things. You can edit the bib entry. Um, I mostly don't do that because my bibliography is all managed by Zotero. Um, you can show the entry. Um, so we can do that. So here it is. Um, that's the right paper. Um, but it's also convenient sometimes to open the PDF itself. So let's do that three. And so you can see that it has the highlights um, all ready to go. Okay, but instead of cutting and pasting from the PDF itself, um, sometimes it's nice to be able to have a feature which just drops all of that highlighted text and all of your notes into a markdown file which you can cut and paste from a little more elegantly. And so for that we'll also go into the actions menu, A, and then we'll do annotate. And so what this does is it looks up the PDF and any highlights it will then drop into a markdown file with the page number noted. Okay, we can close this with space D if you want to get back to that markdown document, you can go into the Explorer, so space E for Explorer. And you can notice, you know, here it will always highlight the file. It'll start with the file that we were in. So this is our main tech file. 
but it creates this annotations folder. And sure enough, here's that markdown file corresponding to the ditter paper. OK, great. And you can then rerun that. If you add more highlighting, um, you can rerun that annotation feature, and it will add new blocks um, to this file. OK, so that's a convenient feature. Um, and yeah, nice for uh, managing your citations and your research workflow. Um, perhaps we don't need this ditter or annotations folder anymore, so we can delete it with D and Y, or yes, I would like to delete it. Okay, so that's a little bit um, about that. Uh, one way that I like to work is <clears throat> while I'm actually writing the paper, I will use here down at the bottom, um, my main Zotero database, which is managed by Zotero. And this is nice because it stays up to date. Um, so if I find some new paper like this one, I can scrape all the bib data and I can organize it. I can put it into a project folder if I want. Um, it saves the PDF. Um, and so here's that new paper, which I can open up. And it's available for citation right away. So this is better 20. Um, let's go back to where we were. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Better 2020. Okay, and let's build this. Let's get rid of this document. Um, and so it's looking up that paper. And there we go. 22. That's the new paper that I've just. Um, downloaded and added to my Zotero database. So that's very nice um, to be able to just have papers as soon as you click that little button in your browser. So this is a plugin for Zotero. Um, so yeah, really nice and seamless. But sometimes when I want to send the paper, perhaps to a journal or to a collaborator, someone you know also working on a paper, um, I don't want to include my entire Zotero database. And so for this, it's convenient to be able to basically draw on all the citations that I've included in the paper and to generate a bibliography which only includes those citations once I'm ready to distribute the paper. And so for this, we'll go back into the Actions menu. Now we have Bib Export. And so if I run this, what it will do is it will run this little script and you can see um, I actually have already created one, so this is a, a duplicate. Um, but if we go in here, this is all of the different um, bibliography entries coming from my paper. So since I don't need that duplicate, let's delete it. Um, this is the old one I have. And uh, yeah, so anyways, this is um, a nice feature to be able to basically build a little local bibliography and you can then once you've built your local bibliography you can then cite you can include that instead of your entire Zotero database without losing anything since it's scraped all the relevant uh, bib data that you need in order to build your document. Okay so that's a nice uh, little additional feature for managing citations. Um, in the next video I'll cover some of the additional features that I use, including templates, snippets, how to edit your glossary, and some other bells and whistles that I've included to ease the research process.